And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bar None Show 2022. All right, man. We're back, back in the motherfucking building. We're back in the building again, man, as we usually fucking do. You already fucking know this man right here, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> we back with another episode. Chilling. Chilling, man. In the slums. In the slums. Still getting to the spread in the Word. ghetto. Hey, man. I'm trying to get out this ghetto, man. Word. I'm trying right. to buy this house on Kiwa. Word. Trying. <laughs> Word. We're going to get there. We're we, we going to have to share a house, though. We share a house together. We're going to get one with Chris at. No, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. You know, we had to bloop the last episode out where he love at. Even like, beep. My man's back there. Yeah. <laughs> so we had, we had to beep it and put that out. I see him. That's why I've been like, all right, it's a go. We can post that one. But yeah, man. Hey, man. Tell tell the people, man, about our guests in the building today, man. Oh, nigga. This is, this is, this is your best friend, nigga. You tell the people who Work. got up the, in here, nigga. All right. Well, shit. Like let, me, let me bring you it up for you, man. We got a special guests in here. A Brook alumni, you feel what I'm saying? Another one doing this thing out here. Another one. A musical god, you hear me? Mm. Yeah, you is, bro. Yeah. Prodigy, god, you feel what I'm saying? One of the baddest mans on the trombone, you feel what I'm saying? My brother right here from another motherfucking Michael Robinson in this bitch, man. Clap it up, man. What's up? What's up, man? Nothing. Thank you guys for having me. Uh, I am normal. So please don't boost everybody's head when they hear this podcast. Uh, I'm just, you know. Hey. Don't, fool, don't, don't listen to him, bro. Kevin gets got two phones. He got four degrees. Come on now. Hey, I'm just, I'm just saying it now. <laughs> four degrees? Yeah, but it's. Oh, it's yeah, what? It's what? It's not, you know. We, 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 we. We'll get into it though, but yeah, we'll pretty talk much about tell it. tell the people out there, man, like where you from and what you got going on and stuff, man. So you know, basically, um, I'm from Charleston. I'm older than everybody in this room, though, but we am definitely much older. But I am well, a Burke alumni, um, and I am class of 1999. I had to rep my class because we a tight class. Um, and I currently live in Bangkok, Thailand. I've been living in Thailand for about five years now. And I teach uh, trombone. Actually, I'm the lecturer of trombone at a university called Mahidon University College of Music. And I am also principal trombone of the Thailand Philharmonic Orchestra. So, yeah, it's been five years. Word, man. Hey, man. We can cut the show right there, man. Shit, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right there, man. But shit, man, how you been doing, dude? How 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 Thailand been treating you and stuff, man? Well, you know, like, you know, I always I want to say I encourage everybody to travel at some point if you can. Yeah. If you've never left Charleston or South Carolina, even leaving the U.S. is a big thing. One of the biggest things that I was not quite prepared for was culture shock. True. Um, because you know, as an American, well, you know, being black is another story for us. We deal with issues there alone. Yeah. But even as black people in the US, we also experience a privilege when we leave to go to certain countries, especially developing countries cuz Thailand is a developing country. True. So, you know, like for example, uh, me when I went, you know, I said something to someone and they stared at me because Thailand really is not an English speaking country. There are people who speak English, yeah. but it's not an English speaking country. And I got very upset because I was like, how can you not speak English? Everybody speaks English. Okay. And that's what everybody does when they go. True. But it's just not true. So you had to learn a little bit of Thai. But I mean, you know, it's been um, it's been interesting. You know, there are phases of living abroad. You have the honeymoon phase. Yeah. Which is, you know, oh, I'm here. It's amazing. I like the food. I like this. Everything's amazing. Like, you just, your eyes are wide awake every day, all day. Camera's out. You're just doing everything. Then there's a, a phase called the frustration phase, which can be pretty long. The frustration yeah. phase is basically the real life thing. So, you know, for example, if you're touring a place, there are people that live there. So, I actually, now I'm living there. I pay taxes, I go to work. My life is like I'm, I live there. So a lot of the things for me, the way they do business, the way everything is done, the culture is so different from American culture that it can be frustrating. And it's not their fault. It's their yeah. culture. Yeah. You can't hate people's culture. That's like people coming in as black people and hating our culture, which we know everybody loves black culture, but I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, they're going to, you know, you, 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 you don't throw shade to people's culture. Asian culture is very conservative. So you have to adjust. So then the next phase is the adjustment phase, yeah. which is where you just, it's like if you plan on staying forever, 
you know, you want to get married or you want to settle down. You have to adjust because all the frustrations and culture shock will not change. It's going to stay. So you just have to adjust and deal with it or you have to leave. So I know this is maybe veering off of my topic as, of, of what I do, but it's actually not because it plays a big part. If anybody that wants to work overseas, you have to take that into account because working in an American job and working a job in another country like an Asian developing country, it is night and day. So you have to really be able to stomach it. Right. You know, I'm doing what I love to do. Yeah. I'm a musician. But, you know, after five years, you know, living there, I wonder if it's time for me to come back here, you know, maybe. Um, you know, parents getting older. I'm an only child. Yeah. And I watch my mom and dad roll, you know, walk around, and I'm like, okay, at some point I'm going to have to come back here. Yeah. But there are a lot of fun things true, about true. living in Asia I could tell you guys about. So, sorry, right. I had to get that out. <laughs> no, that was an important <laughs> part of living abroad, I want you all to know. Real talk. Yeah. Do you ever think you uh, see yourself moving back here? In the future, I would like to. Main reason is because, um, you know, uh, as a musician and going to Burke, uh, Mr. McLeod, you know, trained, I think he trained us all very well how to survive uh, as black men out in the world. I mean, other than our parents and stuff, but you know, he's, he's very instrumental in black men's lives or black people's lives for sure. And <clears throat> for me, I feel like the schooling that I've had, the education I received, the experience that I have, I am more American minded and the level of America here is more on par for what I would like to do. Thailand is great, yeah. but the classical music uh, classical music in Thailand is very young. You know, America has hundreds and hundreds of years of classical music. Thailand, like my orchestra I play in, is actually only maybe, uh, I think it's 16 or, I think it's 20 years old. Yeah. But Charleston Symphony is older, you know. New York yeah. Philharmonic was in the 1800s. Yeah. So it's very new. So it's still some kinks, you know, that yeah. they have to get through. And I plan to come back because I'm more comfortable with the classical music culture here. True. But maybe, you know, I love teaching. So yeah. it would be nice if I got a really good teaching job here and played yeah. as well. Right. But I, I would like to come back at some point, right. I think. True, yeah. true. Yeah. Is it like fucking like... What, what's it like the pro? You know, you already lived over there for like a certain amount of time. Is it like a process for you to like come back over here? No process. It's coming back, coming back to the states is just easy. I literally, if I wanted to come back, I just tell my job there, "Hey, I'm leaving," and then I pack my stuff and I come home. That's it. I oh, just, I mean, it? I have to pay. Like, you you have know, to for, go to like, like take a test or some shit to come back over oh, here. No, 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 oh, no. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Coming as the, the one thing I will say, coming back to America, even during the pandemic, yeah, has been the easiest. Yeah. Going back to other countries, you know, especially Asia, because Asia is the heart of where COVID started, yeah. it's hard. So even right now, um, going back, um, I have to quarantine for a day in a hotel. Yeah. Um, and then I have to take a test. But they're actually starting to change it. So maybe when I go back, they may not do that, which means I'll get some money back because I already yeah. paid for it. Yeah. So I'm hoping they do so I can get that money back. <laughs> <All right>. But <laughs> during COVID, when you were traveling back to Asia, there were people who were leaving and traveling back. They had to quarantine for two weeks. Even Thai citizens, they could not just go in. Yeah. But Americans, we just go in. Yeah. Stuff. So, you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting. I know we talk about my music, which we'll get to. But yeah. the thing that I, I really kind of think it's, 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 it's interesting is, you know, America isn't a perfect country. We have problems, you know, Everybody like any other problems, country. Yeah. But coming home, there are some things I really appreciate, like being able to come back without quarantine, yeah. not having to do this, uh, being able to walk in Walmart and ask, hey, where are the socks? Oh, the socks are over there. Not pull out my phone and use Google Translate to talk to someone. Like little things. Yeah. Eating fried chicken and collard greens and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Just going to Popeye's chicken. Like those things are my sound small, but I'm telling y'all, I've been home for three weeks and I am so happy. I literally, Dante will call me. What you doing? I'm in the bed watching TV. And I have no worries and I am 100% unbothered. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's great. It's great for me. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, well, let's rewind the tape a little bit. Okay, <laughs> just go back in time. Yes. So let's talk about uh, how you started with the whole music route. Well, I went to C. E. Williams Middle School, um, with a band director named Levy Gilliard, who's passed. He's passed away. Um, maybe two thousand and four of a heart attack. Actually, he was very, very. I was very close to him. And what's the funny story is, is that him and Mr. McLeod were good friends. They both went to FAMU. Uh, Mr. Gilliard was two years ahead of Mr. McLeod. 
And I remember when I was at C.E. Williams, Mr. McLeod came when I was in eighth grade and conducted the band for like a day. Yeah. But then the funny story to that, Mr. McLeod and my parents went to high school. So it all just kind of, I feel like Burke was destined for me, you yeah. know? So going to C.E. Williams in West Ashley, the other high schools there were Middleton and St. Andrews High School. I had no interest in going to those two schools. Yeah. Um, so anyway... I went to, I knew I wanted to do band, went to the band class with Mr. Gilliard. He had these, I think you guys remember, I don't know what you did in your schools, but they would show photos of the instruments and say, who wants to play this? Oh, me, me. So first I wanted to play the saxophone, but then Mr. Gilliard was like, I got enough saxophones, fat. My, my nickname was Fathead, and it still is. <laughs> Mr. McClaw calls me Fathead until this day. My head is big and fat, yes. Use your imagination, people. There's no camera, so just use your imagination. But anyway, so. Oh, no, they gonna see that. Oh, no, well, you gonna see this head. Okay, here it is. It's big. It's big and fat. It's okay. All knowledge. Anyway, so um, so he held up the trumpet, and I looked at the trumpet, and I said, that mouthpiece is too small. I have big lips. Not knowing that people played the trumpet, like Wynton Marcellus and Dizzy Gillespie, hello. But to me, I was just like, my lips are too big. So then he held up the trombone, and I saw this. It just looked different. And I was like, I'll play that. So I really started there, and I actually picked up really quickly. Um, you know, most middle school bands had a sixth grade band, and they had the seventh and eighth grade band. I was the only sixth grader in the seventh and eighth grade band. I was actually first chair in that band as well. So I started to kind of like move very fast. I started making all state. I started listening to symphony orchestra CDs when I was like in eighth grade. I love symphony orchestra. I played in the Charleston Youth Symphony Orchestra with Ed Richin. And then when I was graduating middle school, I. Quincy Griffin, who's a saxophonist from Tallahassee, and I went to a St. Andrews football game when Burke was playing St. Andrews. It was in 1994. And Burke walked on that field, and they played I Have Nothing. Me and Quincy <laughs> almost fell out. We were, like, screaming in the stands <laughs> like two groupies. <laughs> and we were like, we going to Burke. Blah, blah, blah. So we knew we were going. And the, um, I actually talked to Mr. McLeod today, and I told him before I went, many band directors, all white, and I hope they're listening, they all told me, don't go to Burke. You're too good for Burke. You're too talented for Burke. Burke's not a school for you. I got that from a lot of white band directors in Charleston. And I went to Burke anyway. And when I graduated from Burke, those same band directors came to me and was like, Michael, Burke was a good choice. You did a good job. Congratulations. And I didn't say anything. Burke was, me. Burke was perfect for me. <laughs> Shut up, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, you know, we try to, you, you, you well, my, like my friend said, we try to be a pillar of the community, not try to be, you know, too, too nasty with them. But I, I never forgot the things they said to me. They, they really bad mouthed the school and was like, basically because it was an all black school, you know, we know that. Yeah. And they, they, they thought my talent was too good for Burke, but I went to Burke and did everything. I went to Carnegie Hall, I went to London, and Mr. McLeod got all the credit for that, and I would not regret that for the rest of my life. So right. then I went to college and majored in music, and the rest is history. So the degrees you were talking about earlier yeah. is right. the bachelor's degree in music, the master's degree in music, Something called an artist diploma, which is basically a degree where you waste time and play. It's not too big of a deal. And then I got my doctorate degree last in musical arts. So that's oh, so you the doctor. Yeah, man. Oh, I am. Oh, excuse me, doctor brother, man. Clap it up for doctor brother. Clap it up, doctor brother. But it's, it's not, you know. I, I I I try to humble myself. I mean, I'm happy for it, but it's you know I, you know, hey, yeah, I got it back in 2015 from Michigan State University, actually. Oh, word. Yeah. Why, were your parents musicians, or did you just pick up on No, that's the thing. My mom is and my dad are not musicians at all. So I definitely took a different path. And coming from an all-black high school, I definitely felt weird. Because Mr. McLeod doesn't have history of any other black musician I know pursuing a symphony orchestra route. You know, of course people went to, you know, fam and played, and people are music educators. Yes, but like the symphony orchestra thing, I was hard into that. And I played with great orchestras. You know, and I can pop a 90 if they need to and just to let them know where I came from. <laughs> I'm old now, so I'll have to take an ibuprofen. <laughs> but I can do a 90 for about two seconds and put my leg right back down. But I could do one. <laughs> Word. You, you, but you, that uh, explains the head, though. So I, I figured it out. You're an alien. <laughs> you're an alien. It's okay. Wow, Ham. <laughs> you're an alien. But, but you do got people in your family that played um Music also. No, I have a cousin that sings. My first cousin, Tamiko Blige, and she's a fantastic singer. She goes to Ebenezer. She sings down. Sean. Sean. I have Sean. 
But I'm your cousin too. But we talking about you talking yeah, about when yeah, you say yeah. music. I mean, I I know you, but yeah. I'm just saying like the I nigga's mean, gifted. Yeah, yeah. About. he is gifted. But yeah. I mean, but he. Okay, I see what you're saying, but yeah. but he took another route. Okay, another is what route. I'm saying. Yeah, okay, yeah like he's he's stuff, in yeah. he's in the working world. Like oh, yeah, he never right. went in orchestra. You know, he played snare drum, and he played in uh, region band and stuff like that. Yeah, but I mean, past college, he didn't pursue it professionally. Is what I mean. All right. But, yeah, I don't have yeah. anyone that pursued their music career professionally. True. Except for my cousin who sings. Okay. And that's it. So yeah. with so with having four degrees, what does that transition to in Thailand? Like, how do they view that? So that's a great question. Um, they don't really. Mm. Uh, so, for example, um, well, having having a doctorate degree in most in in, in academia, mm. now they're requiring it for a lot of schools mm. at smaller schools. So, in the music world, the big music schools like University of Michigan, Michigan State, any big music school, they don't need doctorates there because their careers as musicians is enough. But at a smaller school, they want doctorate degrees, or they won't even give you a look. And even if you have a doctorate degree, there are a hundred other doctorate degrees applying for this job. So you have a lot of people with doctorate degrees who still aren't working. Um, yeah, so that's basically basically what it is. And what did you do to strive yourself to set yourself apart from other people? Well, one thing, I know this sounds like I'm repeating myself, but one thing that I really try to do, I think is very important, and Mr. McLeod knows this. Even when I was at Burke, when I was competing in all state bands and stuff, I was one of the of one of the few black uh, guys that was playing. And my whole thing was, I'm going to drag all of you in this audition. That's I'm cool. going to be the black guy at the top. <laughs> and most of the time, I was. And Mr. McLeod, he can talk to you now. He used to be ear to ear grinning and you know, kind of arrogant because he had. He was like, Michael gonna go in there. Michael gonna kill it. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. Not just for him, but for my people. people. Right. You know? That's beautiful. That was the main thing for me. And I'm still like that today. I always try to help our people to just see what they can do in their life. Not even just music, just in anything. I feel like there's nothing better than walking in a room full of non-black people, sitting at the table, not saying much, but still looking at them. Because I'll sit at a table in the past. I don't say much. But I can feel the intimidation in the room because they don't really know me. They know what I'm going to say. I don't say much, but they know my resume is long Mm -hmm. and strong. Mm -hmm. So, and I get up and leave. And I could feel them like, who is that? What's his name? Oh, he went to Burke. Oh, my God. I love it. I love it. They don't know how to take it. (laughs) <laughs> and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about going to Burke because I started off at West Ashley High and then transitioned to Burke to be closer to my grandparents um, as they was aging and whatnot. But I think that was one of the best decisions of my life. Like, honestly, like to just be viewed as like playing against like BE because I did sports at Burke. So playing against like BE and stuff like that, being viewed as the nigga school, stuff like that, mm-hmm. it just it fuels a fire in you that you just – you just want to let loose on it, but not in a, a in a manner of like, let me beat your ass. Mm. But I'm gonna beat your ass in a different way mm. that you can't even touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. It's all about that. It's all about that. I tell people all the time, you know, I'm, I'm name dropping because I'm putting people out there. My valedictorian is a smart doctor with his own practice. He's a podiatrist, Dr. Ron Ravenel. Oh, like, yeah, well, Burke yeah, has me, people. Me the, the other week. Yeah. yeah, it's like I have another uh, young lady that went to school where she's like a top person in Boeing. Mm-hmm like a top wow. person in Boeing engineer, wow. you know? My class, Burke is full of right. brilliant minds, but they don't show that they don't. at all, you know? I can imagine when you when people go to Ron and get their feet done, some of the white people we have, oh, where'd you go to school? I went to Burke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but your feet will be right when he's done. Don't worry, boo. <laughs> don't be scared of that. <laughs> don't worry about it. It'll be okay. It'll be okay, so... But with, yeah, that's. I feel it's important to really help your community if you can. Very, very important. Um, you know, when I I came home, uh, when I first finished my doctorate degree, I came to Charleston. I was living in Charleston for two years, and what I did was I was playing with the Charleston Symphony as an extra, like a sub and second trombone. And then I was teaching private lessons. And when I was teaching private lessons, I went to all these schools. You know, I was getting paid to do it. But at first, I was received a little bit by the parents. You know, they saw me like, where you come from? Now, little did they know, I was here long ago. Mm-hmm. Some of these teachers you have, they weren't even here yeah. when I was around. Yeah. Not even a local. Not even. Yeah. I've been here. Yeah. So Mr. McLeod's thing was always like, he would always, when I would tell him I was teaching these schools, he's like, yeah, 
they're going to learn from Burke today. He was always saying that because I was going around teaching and gave good knowledge to them, and I was getting what I was worth. Mm-hmm. I think the, 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 the tricky thing why most people may not work in their community who are highly qualified is because, like, for example, I told Mr. McLeod, I would work in my community, but I also want to get what I'm worth. That's the hard part because it's hard. You can't. The white people can afford to do Facts. that, but most of the community can't. Facts. Okay. So then that's the – I go to Burke. Dante and Ham, no. I go help Mr. McLeod for nothing because that's my community. I don't even budge mm-hmm. to I do too. that. I, too. But go ahead. Keep on going, brother. <laughs> Him, too. He does do that. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, you know, we, we, we want what we're worth. But every now and then, though, you have to show up for your community so they can see the positive and the parents can see the positive and the people outside can see the positive. It's important. I wear Burke all day. Yeah. I let them know where I'm from on purpose because yeah. it's important. I didn't go to Wando. I went to Burke. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Not sorry. <laughs> you know, so. But I after after leaving Burkham, I mean, you're talking about classical music. Unfortunately, you know, people thought I was going to go to FAMU. But I didn't go to FAMU because I knew what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, an HBCU wasn't the direction I wanted to go because I wanted, as crazy as it sounds, I, I'm proudly black. But I wanted to be symphony orchestra as a white stage, mm-hmm. period. The only way to really get on that white stage like that, you have to go to some of these PWIs. You just do. Eastman and Cleveland Institute and Juilliard and this and that. You have to go there to get the instruction. I hope I'm not I'm not trying to talk down on HBCUs. HBCUs are great. Many great educators come from there. But if you're going to uh, go the route of professional orchestra music, the PWIs, most people go there because that instruction is just a little bit different there. So that's the only way that they, they instruction is geared more towards right putting somebody in a symphony. Right, right, right. which makes sense. It's a it's, orchestra is is white mm-hmm. mostly. You are a speckle of black. That's right. Also, that the credential you get from that school it matches the position that they're looking for. Because if you go to an orchestra and say, "Hey, I want FAMU," but you don't see family on the orchestra scale of like what do you, like the prerequisites. You go to your schools and you say, oh, I had somebody from this school before. Not somebody from Cookman or Family State. Well, let me correct you. What you're saying, you what you're saying makes sense. But I'm uh, the the thing about that would maybe happen maybe in a and if you're working at academia going to Harvard, but with orchestra though, let's say I went to Family for a bachelor's degree. Then let's say I auditioned for one of those PWIs, right? And I got in and I did really well. Then I won a job in an orchestra. The orchestras really don't care where you go. Mm-hmm. You can go to Timbuktu University because most orchestra auditions are blind. So when you're behind the screen and you play your ass off and you win, they're not going to say, oh, you went to fam? Oh, get out. No, they're like, congratulations, you're our new trombone player. Your audition was awesome. See you at work next week. Mm-hmm. Here's your contract. So your, your school for orchestra doesn't matter. They just want to hear how you play. But there are Juilliard people who've auditioned against state school people and lost mm-hmm. because the other. It's just all about who plays the best. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time, sometimes it can be the other thing too. But you knew going to an HBCU, you'd be limited in the direction of where you really wanted. Where to Where I go. wanted to. I, I, yeah. I know that sounds bad. No, it doesn't. It makes it makes it makes total sense because again, the instruction is what matters first. You yeah. See? In order to gain that that knowledge, you have to step out that that typical back that typical setting. Right. Like a, a family or a state or yeah. b- Bethune. But, again, orchestra and like thinking of like stepping into those panels, man, like you said, it's speckles of black here and there. Speckles. And that's that's that speaks a lot about your character. You know what I mean? To go ahead and say, hey, guys, yeah, I can do this route. I can, I can be the best black person at a black school, but let me take a, a step on a higher level. And see what I can do. You know right. what I mean? So hats off to you, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Man. Thank you. It's, it's it's still a lot, it's a lot for everybody to learn, and even a lot for me to learn. But you know, they have uh, black music festivals and stuff for black. It's, as as a matter of fact, I'm going to put this out there. There's a festival called the Gateways Festival. Um, they're actually doing a concert in Carnegie Hall this week. The first all black orchestra to debut at Carnegie oh, wow. Hall. It's happening this weekend. Wow. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. I'm in Thailand. But I a lot of my friends are playing. So I just, if y'all ever hear this, good luck. Get on the stage and kill it. I hope you guys kill it and shut it down. I'm so excited that they get to do that. That has never happened. That's beautiful. Where's, where's this going to be played at? 
Um, so it's at Carnegie Hall in New York, okay. but the, the Gateways Festival is all black musicians, kind of from different parts of the U.S. or wherever, mm-hmm. um, and it's all black. Teachers, wow. performers, everybody. Wow. And they meet a couple of times a year or once a year to do like a festival, and they're playing at Carnegie this week. That's amazing. I'm so, I'm like excited. <laughs> it's not me, but you know, it's it's like, Your you know, you've been around. it's kind of like, you know, during Jim Crow mm-hmm. when our great-great-grandparents was getting hosed on and stuff, and we can walk into Waffle House and sit down and eat. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. I can go in here and eat? Yeah. It's the same because it's the first time that an all-black yeah. orchestra debuted on that stage. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So let me ask you something right quick. Okay. Um, I've always, well, I know for a fact that the U.S. isn't going to be my end-all, be-all. Mm-hmm. Um, for people who want to live other countries and stuff like that, what would you say... Um, I know you said like it's you got the honeymoon stage and you go through all these transitions and stuff like that, but to make U.S. dollars and then live, you know, like in Thailand, of course our dollar weighs more. Um, how would somebody go about that route? Like just to just to say, hey, how is it living in Thailand? Like, what could I do to do that same thing? Should should you look at like a remote job? Should you look at Remote job here or starting a business here, traveling once twice a month? Like, what's the best route you think would be? So right now, uh, most of the people, uh, not most, a lot of people who are moving to developing countries, so to add to what you're saying, developing country, you know, Southeast Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Cambodia, Philippines, that area, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are moving there because the U.S. dollar weighs a lot. And Mm -hmm. if you, so a lot of people are retiring there because that retirement. It's beautiful. If a person's getting $4,000 a month in retirement, if they go to Southeast Asia, I'm getting everybody known this podcast, you will live like a king. Facts. You can have everything you want on 4000 USD. You can have it on 3000 but 4000 you You're bracking. It's an amazing life. Yeah. I see people do it. Um, so it's say, for example, if you were like, you know, I want to move to the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Uh I got my job because it was posted online. It was posted a uh, trombone instructor in Thailand, so I applied. You have people who work for the embassy, who work for government jobs, where their governments send them off. Remote work, you can move. If, if, if you have a job that's strictly remote, mm-hmm. you can move You know anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. but you have to have visas for these places. Mm-hmm. So you have to figure out, how do I get a visa? I have a, a non-immigrant B visa, which is a work visa. So okay. for me, it's easy. But for people who don't work in a country you want to live, it can be difficult. A lot of paperwork. You. Right. So you got to get, you got to go to your embassy. Mm-hmm. They have, you know, they have retirement visas. They have visas for people. But you have, you, you can't just move there because you want to move there. It's not that easy. The visa process would have to be, so in Thailand, example, they have a visa, retirement visa. You have to have 800,000 baht in the bank. I know it's baht. You don't know what baht is, but 100,000 baht. That's like their pounds or their money. Well, it's like their money. Yeah. So 800,000 baht. Let me say 100,000 baht. 33 baht is $1. Okay. So 100,000 baht is like Mm $33,000. You have to have that in the bank. And you can't touch it. Mm -hmm. Then once you show proof of that, then you have to show every month you're getting, I think, is 60 or 70,000 baht. Every month, okay. which is about, I'll say, I'll say like two thousand dollars. You have okay. to show that coming your account every month for you to stay in Thailand, and that visa has to be renewed every year. So, so yeah, you're like okay. So it's not yeah. you really no, have no, to plan it, it, it makes out. Sense. It makes sense. You have to plan it out. Only fans you can make about you know about two thousand, four thousand <laughs> a week. Facts. So yeah, <laughs> transition that to bots. Yeah. No. Bot. Bot. Yeah. bot. Like robot, but bot. B A B A H T. So it's bath, but switch the H and the T. Thai bot. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you did. So in, 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 in most, some countries, it's easier. But in those countries, it's a little bit more tough because a lot of people people flock there because it's hot. Right. This summer, it's 100 degrees every day. There's no winter. It's mm. hot every day. The humidity is ridiculous. Right. There's <laughs> beaches and good food, and everything is cheap. A five star hotel, you can stay in a Marriott. A five star Marriott. They even have six star hotels there. You can stay in a five star Marriott hotel with like top notch service for under two hundred dollars a month. I mean, for under two hundred dollars a night. A night, damn. And it's good. Yeah. If you want hundred dollars in USD dollars for a Thai bot, it's three thousand yeah. three hundred eighty yeah. dollars mm-hmm. So a hundred thousand is thirty three thousand dollars. Yeah, right. that's how much you have to have. I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let y'all know, that flight is twenty thousand 
I'm sorry. Well, I'm thinking money. I'm thinking the flight is 24 <laughs> hours. Okay. It's yeah. long coming from the East Coast. Yeah, because yeah, he been need no. No, no, no. no I ain't gonna, that's been, in the bus. It's 24 hours. Right. It's 24 to 29. If you fly any of the Middle Eastern airlines like uh, Dubai, um, Emirates, or Etihad, or Qatar, mm. it's like 36 because they have like a 10-hour layover, layover in the Middle East. Is that your straight flight or you stop at the No. It's, it's a layover. It's layovers that make it really long. Yeah. Same same for uh, Africa. No, you get off and walk in the airport and yeah. walk around, and you can take a shower. It depends on, like, if you have the lounge and, you know. Yeah. They feed you. You eat two meals and a snack on those long flights like that. They feed you. you so you s- you see a lot of, like, YouTubers and stuff like that moving to, like, Bali, Indonesia, mm-hmm. and stuff like oh, that. Oh, Bali's great. Yeah. Um, and in Bali, you know, I I see that it's, like, a lot of people young living in Bali, you see what I'm saying? But they're they're doing YouTube videos, traveling all across the world, mm-hmm. and those clicks are giving them those dollars that they're looking for. Now, they don't, like how you broke it down, saying how much money you have in your account and what you should have, I've never heard this before. Mm. So that's very informational for me. Now, Indonesia, other countries, I don't know. But I know Thailand, that's what it is. Okay. But usually, because because think about it. If you didn't have these if these these rules, mm-hmm. everybody would just flock there. Right. Killers, murderers, people who run it from the law, mm-hmm. which has happened in Southeast Asia, actually. That's why they tighten it down. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to go dark, but Thailand actually has quite a few sex offenders that have gone there in the past. Mm. So they really try to crack that down, yeah. you know. Yeah. So they're going to say, oh, no, you need this. Because they, they don't want, like this, they don't just want, want the four of us packing up and right. just flying. They, they, their right. population would triple. The city, <laughs> the city of Bangkok, which is, if you guys don't know about it, Google it, watch it. It's a good city. It's, well, it's we like the New York of Thai. It's a yeah. huge city. We watch Hangover. We know. Basically, <laughs> but it's 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 it, the, the the nightlife before COVID. It's one of the top party places in the nation. You could have anything you want, and I mean anything. If y'all mm-hmm. can read between the lines, Facts. and you can bully. Yeah, you can do that too if you want. Hey, so, I mean, that too. That too. That too. Germany was good though. I like Germany when I went so to Berlin. So damn, nigga, how many countries have you been to? Don't ask that question. I don't. I have to name them. But I don't know. I've been to. I've been to name them. I've been to England, Germany, uh, France, Italy, uh, Belgium, Thailand, China, Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Cambodia, Canada. Is that it? Yeah. Twelve. Now what city that was in 12. those countries? Oh no, God. <laughs> we, ain't, we, ain't going, we ain't getting that deep. Now. But you know, you know, you know the thing is where I'll say why I'm very lucky. All of those places have been for music. Awesome. I didn't just pack. The only place I went for without music, uh, Cambodia. I just went to Cambodia because it's near, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to check it out. And you know, it was just you know, you, you have to realize once I leave Asia, I'm gonna, I'm saying this: when I leave Asia, I will not return. I've lived there. The flight is too damn long. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm knocking them out. Yeah. I was hoping to go to Japan before I left, but then COVID hit, and I I was supposed to do a recital in Japan. Oh, I got to wow. do a recital. I got. Sponsorship from um, Conselmer Instrument Company to go in 2019, and then COVID came and shut it down. Wow! So unfortunately, Japan. I don't know if I'll get there, but that was I wanted to go there before I left. How do you see music changing in Charleston? Or what does music mean in Charleston? Besides Mr. McLeod, because we know. It. What does music mean in Charleston? That's a good question. It's kind of a hard question. Well, honestly, I will say, if I can be real. I don't think Charleston really pays much attention to music for me, I feel. Charleston Symphony has been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charleston Symphony at one point was in a lot of trouble. You know, they folded. They had to start over. Mm-hmm. Um, the money is not amazing there, but Charleston Symphony Orchestra is great. I've played in many orchestras, as you know, you guys know. And Charleston Symphony stands like they strong. Mm-hmm. They're a good group. They all can freaking play. And they bring in a lot of tourists. They bring tourists yeah. in. It's a great mm-hmm. orchestra, but Charleston is more into, you know, the registry and uh, historic markers and the market Mm -hmm. more than music. I will say that here, I don't think like music, like the the music scene here doesn't compete with a lot of cities up north. Oh, wow. It just doesn't. Um, I mean, think of it. Miami. Miami's a people go to Miami, right? Mm -hmm. Miami doesn't have an orchestra. They have a a training orchestra called New World Symphony. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. But it's a training orchestra to train them to go out. Oh, wow. You know, and they're great. A lot of them get jobs in New York Phil's and Chicago Symphonies in Philly. But it it just goes to show that, 
you have a beautiful place like this where you would think a symphony would thrive. It's beautiful here. It's good food. People would love the Winnow's orchestra job in Charleston. I live in Charleston and I play an orchestra. But you have cities like Buffalo where it's like cold all the time. Rochester, uh, Detroit, Cleveland. It snows in those places. But those Negative orchestras degrees. are top notch. Cleveland Orchestra is probably undeniably in the top three in the United States. Wow. Period. And their endowment and their money is insane. The salary is off the hook. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you gonna live in Cleveland, you're like, oh it's Cleveland. You like, but you see my Jones. house. Right. <laughs> my orchestra is amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> music for me, I don't I don't I don't know. I think which what we would need to change in Charleston is just which most places they have to put more funding into the arts. Mm. Okay. Like anywhere. Yeah. See, I I wouldn't even think of like Cleveland to be a place for orchestra. Oh God, it's great. Yeah, like I, you just don't hear that. Well, mm-hmm. I went, I got my masters from there. That's how I okay, found out right, about it. Right, just, but right, it's just. it's great. I mean, like you said, even Buffalo, you're like Buffalo. What? I know Buffalo Wings. Buffalo Philharmonic. <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Buffalo Philharmonic is fantastic okay. orchestra. <laughs> Wow. Fantastic. See, I think, but those living conditions, you're thinking like negative degree weathers in the winter and stuff like that. It's kind of like, ugh. But that check beautiful. beautiful. I, need to get right. a mink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but you do, you know, and I know, I know fantastic musicians, but this, this, this is the thing I mean about why the U.S. I mean, it's hard to get a job in the U.S. because the U.S. to veer off of music in the, 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 the world ranking for university, universities and colleges, the United States at the top 10, U.S. has five of them. Mm. We have five. So that lets you know you, that people talk about the U.S. Yeah, we got issues and racism, whatever. But U.S. has good education mm-hmm. comparable to the world. We have five in the top ten. Yeah. And when you go down, we still knocking them off. Yeah. Right? So the school that I work at in Thailand, um, it's a good school in Thailand, right? Mm. But in the world ranking, it's like 400. Oh, wow. Now, my music school was in the top 50. They just yeah. made the top 50 recently. Okay. But the university still is. So what I'm saying is. The United States is saturated with good music schools and great talented musicians. There are a lot of starving musicians. If they came in here and played the instrument, you'd be like, you don't have a job. And she's like, no, I teach lessons and I play in the regional orchestra because there's so many good players. Wow. There's many good players. So one of the reasons I jumped to Thailand was because I knew the pool wasn't as strong. One, because America's a bigger country. Mm -hmm. But the music schools in Thailand, I mean, I'll say this on the podcast, they don't touch American schools, yeah. they don't, you know, in general. My school is the top one, mm-hmm. and it's in the top 50 in the in the mm-hmm. thing. U.S., we got them top, you see what I'm saying? So that, that's what I'm saying. So, But I went there because I got offered a job. Yeah. So I took it. Yeah. I mean, I'm ready to move, but hey. Bro, I feel like I can see you playing that, like playing for Walt Disney or something like that. Don't get me started on Walt Disney. So we about I, to turn I, this into I, I, a, a racism I, I, conversation. No, I, 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 don't know why. Like, I don't know why. You know, like when you used to watch them like, old cartoons thing. and shit back in the G. I mean, like movies and shit like and that. And then you hear the background. orchestra in the background. And they play all the shit. Like I feel like you, you. You'll do Hamilton. No, I'll do anything. So <laughs> you talking about? I'll do anything. <laughs> no, but the orchestra play everything. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. That scene. You talking about the soundtrack scene? The soundtrack scene is all in L.A., mostly in L.A., because, you know, the studios. Oh, yeah. yeah. That community is locked tight. Yeah. The only way I would be able to get into that yeah. is if somebody gave me a call and said, Mike, we need an extra. But once you in, you in. But it's locked tight. I have, I have always said I wanted to do a soundtrack because when you do a soundtrack to a good movie, those residuals come forever. Yeah. You're going to just get a check in your box. Your your mortgage is due. You like oh my god, and then you open. You're like oh here's the mortgage. <laughs> like it's just the you you know. Already there on radio. They are set for the next twenty years. Yeah, I mean it's you know, and it's 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 not a full time. You don't get salary and benefits. It's kind of like a freelance thing. But I yeah. mean, there's always movies in Hollywood, exactly. and the same people are playing. Don't worry, man. Oh, I know the well, niggas well, in that Pirates break of free. Caribbean movies. Well, we break free, movie. bro. We we hey yo whoa. <laughs> My boy over here. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey. No, I would, I would, you know, actually, the Black Panther movie, mm-hmm. that orchestra was black, and I knew half the orchestra because one of my homegirls, Stephanie, she contracted for them. Oh, wow. And I was in Thailand mm-hmm. when they did it. So, being in Thailand, I've missed out on a lot. A lot. Yeah. That's another reason I'm like, I'm missing out on a lot of things I could have been a part of. Yeah. I could have been a part of this Gateways concert at Carnegie because yeah. I know the people there. Yeah. And they. 
Oh my God. Damn. Gateway. <laughs> Gateway. With Kendrick Lamar, bro. Hey. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they, that 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 orchestra and um the one I told you is called Gateways. I have an email. They want they invited me to play with them three years ago. That was my chance. I could have broken in. Mm. But I was in Thailand. I was like. The flight's expensive. They were going to pay me some, but I couldn't make it. Yeah. So that's another thing. I, I feel like I'm far away from all the really big opportunities that right. I could be getting. I've missed a few. It's going to come back. I so how, so. How, how, how much longer do you see yourself in Thailand? Well, I'm just going to say it on the podcast. I'm ready to go right. just because I feel like I'm ready to move on to bigger fish. Yeah. Um, that was a, it's, it's a good job. You know, for someone starting out, but for me, my vision and the level and everything I'm looking for, I'm ready to come back to yeah. where it all started. Or I mean, honestly, the states. Well, even if I got another job in another part of the in the world, I would probably go. You know, I go where my opportunity is. Yeah. You know, if something comes up for me in, let's say, California. Well, yeah, but I mean, outside of the U.S., like if it was even in another Asian country. Not China, but if it was in another Asian country, I would jump. I would jump on if the money's good. Yeah. But then I would still hopefully inch my way back yeah. here. If Korea gives you over the asking of extra ordinary amount that you want, would you go to Korea? No Korea. I doubt they'd ask. First of all, no, fuck I doubt they'd ask. the answer. Listen, all money ain't good money. <laughs> Let me be clear. Don't always chase money. North Korea is a strong hard no. I don't care if they offer me a hundred thousand dollars. No, I'm good. The answer is no. Does Africa have orchestras? Yes. Yeah, but I mean, obviously it's not, and they have talented musicians in Africa too. But you hear nothing about them. Mm. But the money isn't like it is mm. here. U.S. has U.S. orchestras. <laughs> the top ones I named: Chicago, New York, Pittsburgh. It's like a fifteen or twenty of them. The salaries are the highest in the world. Even the European orchestras, they have many orchestras in Europe, but their salaries aren't really as high as some of ours, as the top ones. So what's your, like, favorite orchestra? Like, what, what, what's your orchestra that you think about? You'd be like, damn, I wish I could get in that motherfucker. Walt Disney. <laughs> that's not an orchestra, but that's oh, my God. I don't know. Hey. Well, you know, there are many. Honestly, for me, I played in Detroit under a fellowship program. Detroit Symphony is great. I really love to hear Chicago Symphony play. They don't play around. That brass is off the chain. That brass section is probably my favorite. You, if you just Google Chicago Symphony and listen, you'd be like, they 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 they, they, they peel paint, but with good sound. So I know I know we talk, you know, we cutting into orchestra and stuff like that. But even for me, education, I think even with teaching, you know, I don't know if I said this, but I'm the only black trombone player in Thailand. I'm the only one. And I yeah. teach at the top music school in Thailand, and my orchestra is also the top one. So that was something I wanted to do, too. Like, for me, I guess, I don't want to say it like this, but for me, it's always kind of in my mind, wherever I go, I want to be one of the best. And I would love to have company, black people with me, you know? Yeah. But I can't, really. So what I do is I have some of my talented, smart trombone friends come to Thailand and do classes. I've introduced my students to more black people than they've probably ever known in their life. And I do it on purpose because everybody wants the European trombone players and the white players. And I'm like, what about the black players? And I introduce them to them. And when I do, they're like, oh, um, Ajahn. So uh, Ajahn means teacher in Thai. They're like, Ajahn Michael, he's amazing. And I'm like, I know. You never heard of him. Never heard of him. Mm. It's just like that. Yeah. You know, I introduce them to black people only. Sorry, it's my agenda. <laughs> I, hey, I teach I'm trombone right, only. I, I'm right there with you. That's I my agenda. You. It I is. Well, so the way as what you're saying it makes sense. The way it works, unfortunately, is I'm a trombone teacher, so I can't call a saxophone to send because they have a saxophone teacher. Each department person, we're in charge. So I can't be like, Lenar, go work with saxophones. Because the saxophone teacher's gonna be like, excuse me, who is this? So you know, know what I'm saying? I can't I can't cross. So even though yeah. the audience don't know about it, you're like my prof bing back in the day. Oh God. <laughs> Miss Prof Bing. Yeah, you're prof bing. Yeah, I'm your prof bing. Okay. That is a compliment. Thank you. What the fuck are y'all talking about? So prof prof bing was the he was he was he was the old he was the low brass. I had prof bing when I was in camp. He was a great person. He was good. But he passed away a long time ago. But he was he was good. He was good. Back in the day stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's some old yeah, yeah, that's why that great right there. My beard is white. Yeah, salt and pepper. Though. That's all right. I got a little. I got a little salt, but you ain't got nothing in there. Well, I got a little couple scrambles. He got a little. He yeah. does it just yeah. for a minute. Hey, <laughs> hey bro, go play with me, bro. Just for a minute. <laughs> hey, 
I get a flashback just now, bro. I literally got a flashback just now. Hey, get up on my bed, man. I got a. I got one. I got one. I got one right there. He got one. I got a flashback just now, bro. It's somewhere in there. I got a flashback just now, bro. I almost. I, if Mike wasn't here, I would have caught back on you just. Now. Yeah, it reminded me when I was at camp and dog got laughing, but like. <laughs> and I just like caught back and bop. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, about Mike right there, so I ain't gonna hit the man. Well, let, let, me, no, let me back out no, first. You don't gotta get up. You don't gotta oh get up. Oh my god. But dude, um on, on another note, dude, what what's what's something that you can tell like a young person that's like uh coming up like playing the instrument or like doing anything positive, like you can see the potential in them, like they they pretty much like on top of the game, but they don't really wanna stick to it. Like what? What's some motivational type stuff that you would tell them, like to keep on pushing out there? Because like their parents are, they ain't really fortunate like that or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So pretty much, like, what's some positive things that you can tell them? Well, it's true that one of the things that's different for us is resources. So the parents may not be pushing them. One is because of the resources, the financial resources, and also maybe because a lot of parents don't think music is a career. They're like, why are you doing this? You're not going to make money. And that can be true, you know. So the musicians who are making money are the good ones. But there's, I think, if a person wants to do music and I wanted to push them, something I would recommend them to do is, you know, I did a lot of camps. Now, camps aren't free. You have to pay. But there are ways to go to camp, and there are ways to get money. Uh, you just have to research it. And some of these camps have scholarship for less fortunate people. Less fortunate, I'm sorry I even said that. That just got under my skin because they see a black person, oh, less fortunate. But I'm, you know, I, I hated that I used that term. But I mean, if the person is doesn't have the money or their parents don't have the money, they can get scholarship. I recommend them to do camps. I recommend them to find an after-school program. I recommend them to see where there's a program where they can get free private lessons because those are out there too. There's scholarships for private lessons out as well. They can research. And I would just tell them not to give up because something I learned, even if a musician doesn't want to do music, a good musician, I will tell y'all now, most of the class, and it happens till this day, most of my class of 99, the top 20 of us, I think 18 of us or 16 of us were in the band. So it's like music, you can't really, and you know, in my opinion, I'm going to say in my opinion, you can't be a dumb musician. To be a musician, you have to be a good musician. You have to have some type of brain, like of thinking, because music is counting. Uh, you know, it's nothing but math. You have seven, eight time, nine, eight time. You have to do fractions. You have to have some type of brain. I feel like even if you don't major music, doing music does activate something in your brain. You 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 think quicker on your feet. It's it's just it, it makes you a little smarter. I've always felt that way. Not for all of these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I'm saying a good musician no, now. Well, I guess you can't call them. No, musicians. I think I honestly feel like if if you're not you're that really smart, uh, so I guess you're saying like it's players and then it's musicians. <sighs> Well, because I know some motherfuckers who was in the band who was just dumb as shit. You know? <laughs> Were they that's good? What, no. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that's what we said. We separated. Yeah. If, I'm, a, st- I'm a player. I'm a player. If, if, if a person wants to, I feel like, but I still feel like being in band still teaches you certain life skills also. Yeah. That does. other things don't. I feel like there's something you can learn from being from being in the band, even if you don't want to pursue music. This there are life skills. Not like you know, Ham. You said, "Oh my God, I went to school with some dumb nigga." Okay, I get it. But there's dumb people who who work in an office. Yeah, it's dumb people who do everything. Everybody got dumb. Some of those CEOs in these companies, I found out, they dumb as dumb as bricks. <laughs> that's why they. That's why they be saying like it's not really no bad band. It might be like just a bad director. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I that it can be that, but I that's my my advice to them would just be to keep 
keep pushing because of life skills. It teaches you life skills. And you also have to realize everything that you're doing, if you don't want to do it, you can't just quit everything. That's not how life works. You have to learn to fight through things. And sometimes they can just keep on, like, they can be good, like, keep on pursuing it. And that can get them more in college to actually do it. It can get you in college. It can get you a a scholarship in college because here's the thing. This is another important thing. Like you're saying, everybody's not going to get an academic scholarship. Yeah. You're not going to get it because academic scholarships are hard to get. Academ- Any student in school, and y'all know this, with academic scholarships, they're smart because they don't give those out. And hey, yes, hey, I'm at, yeah, I know, I look at you him. know, but smart hey, pants. he's smart. But hey, it's, it is what it is. He was fortunate to do I'm that. Smart, but, he, but I do dumb shit. Let's just, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Well. I don't even get. I'll, I'll let Dante get on you, but that's no, what I'm saying. Y'all talk about this you got an academic up. scholarship, but you also got a music scholarship if you wanted because you played in saxophone. You could have had that also. So, people who aren't who weren't valedictorian like you were, I was. I was salutatorian. Okay, people who weren't an honor graduate and salutatorian like you would need another way to go to school. So you quit band. Your GPA is a one point eight. And you want to go to college. Okay, well, I guess you're going to try then. I mean, <laughs> man, this nigga. You, you need. One point eight, nigga? I'm saying, <laughs> you got though. Start <laughs> because it's proven. Funny. Listen, y'all, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell y'all the truth. My SAT score sucked. What was it? I'm not you even remember? saying it. It was bad. No, nigga, what but was it? I made it in my where life. Start is where you finish. Thank you. Yeah, that's what Mr. McLeod told me. My SAT score was bad. It's not because I'm it not in smart. The thousands, though. My SAT score was bad. <laughs> it's not because I wasn't smart. I think I just didn't really apply myself. I thought the test was stupid. I didn't. I, I still think the SAT score is not a good yeah, way to to judge a person I, because it's not for black, for right. black people. That really have nothing to do with us. Yeah. I did so right with it. when it I when I retook ACT. it the second time, my score was lower though. If it wasn't for the ACT, nobody would have passed. Really, 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 really I didn't even take that one. I didn't even take the ACT. Yeah, like, so. I had to take ACT. I had to take as, what nigga? <laughs> Don't this, <laughs> he gets on my last nerve. But no, the point both. the point is I would I would tell them to stick with it if they're interested for that. For definitely scholarship, you can get some band scholarships. If you're a decent musician, some of these schools will give you a ton of money yeah. just to march in their band. Benedict. They won't even necessarily look at certain things. But hey, you go to Benedict and you get a bachelor's degree, you find yourself while you're at Benedict and your grades are decent, you go to get a master's, you finished high. No, I'm Some not saying it's a bad school. I'm just saying they will give you money. To give you money and you so, get the degree. How did you, so, so since you're doing orchestra and everything, how did you feel about the military bands? Because a lot of military bands are, a- are offering and advertising for musicians to come in and play for their bands now. So military band jobs are great. If you can get one. The better ones are the premier bands. Those are the DC bands. The Coast Guard, uh, Navy band, Air Force band, uh, Army band. And the top one is the President's Own. That's the Marine band. Okay? The pay is great. The benefits are great. You're in the military. It's a cush job. It's a cush job. Yeah, they if and I, I have some colleagues who play in those orchestras, and I mean, you know, you they have to wear uniforms, you have to shave off your face, you can't, you know, it's it's military, but the job once they all have, <laughs> they all have basic training except for the president's own. So they did basic training too, like they have to do gun training and all the other training. Too. But the president's own, there's no basic. That's the only oh, one. So they, they basically just trained them to be on goal. You just, no, so you just Put the drum down. For the president's own, you just saw sh- <laughs> you just you just auditioned. And you're not carrying those service pistol as you're playing. Well, I, look, I'm not in the band. Well, none of them have to do that. <laughs> but you know, no, the military band jobs is another way. It's amazing if you can get it. It's 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 you're set. What you like? It's like you retire with rank and stuff, and you live your life. Everybody knows mil- military retirement is one of the best. When you retire from military, you. You good to go. I don't know, I know if you know about it. But I feel like since you know about don't. symphony, uh, like, what, do you know anything about like the the big jazz bands? Like, uh, so I know about a few. So you know, with the Wynton Marcellus Lincoln Center group is the biggest one. Actually, there was a trombone player. There was a trombone player inside of that group who went to what's that school in Columbia? Keenan, Ron. That's Ron's last name. I'm sorry, Ron. I forgot your last name. But um, he was with Mr. Lyles in Keenan High School in Columbia. He played in the Lincoln Jazz Center Orchestra for a while. And then Wyclef, who went to FAMU, used to play. I think he played there also. Fantastic jazz trombone player. But I didn't take that route. That wasn't the route I wanted. But that's a different thing. 
if you want to do that. I think many people don't really do jazz because uh, jazz mostly is combos and, you know, you do jazz groups. But I don't know the financial situation. True. If it's as good as the rest, I don't know. Maybe the Lincoln Center is. Can you play jazz? Yes, I can play jazz. So you're talking about it. Everybody knows Charlton Singleton and Charles. He's like Charleston's Wynton Marcellus. You know, yeah. he's a very great chapel player, very smart guy. Um, when I would come home, he would have me sub in a rehearsal as just because someone would miss the rehearsal. So, Michael, can you come and sub? Lead. The only thing I hate about jazz is improvisation. I hate improvisation. And I think I suck at it. What's that? Improvisation is literally playing an improvised solo off your head with the chords underneath. Okay. You just play whatever you want. Right. I suck at that. So my thing was I will read this chart. I will read it for you and go home. I, not trying to sound a certain way, I read a mean lead. You put me on lead trombone, that chart will be read from top to bottom, period. But I don't ask me to improvise. I will tell you, you do it. But I will read your chart and I will lead this, this, this line. And when I sat there and played lead, uh, the saxophone player, I forgot his name, he was sitting in front of me and he turned around and he kind of nodded his head and was like, then he turned back around and I was like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got you. Well, I'll say this. I could if I wanted to, but I just don't. So the way that I am, I don't like to be showcased unless I'm really, really good at something. Improvisation, you're by yourself, right? You're alone playing solo. I can't do, I won't do anything unless I'm going to kill it or I'm really good at it. If, if I'm media, no, actually I don't. I just, I, I don't really care to do it. Like, I should learn, but there are people who dedicated their life and learning jazz to doing improvisation correctly and transcriptions and things. I didn't do any of that. Yeah. There are people who majored in jazz in college. But it's different. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Orchestra is it's, it's different. So I won't do that unless I can kill it. If I can't kill it, I won't even do it. I will not look mediocre. But you do understand the scales and like how, how everything goes for the jazz. Of course. I understand that. But still, improvisation to me is more than just, you know, playing a scale or a triad or do it even. There's like, I hear people when they improv and I'm like... That's what I want. That's how I would want to sound. Like, have you have you heard Wenton play? Like, when Wenton, I mean, okay, I don't want to sound like Wenton. But they're like Wycliffe. It's one of the, like the top, one of the top jazz trombone players out right now. If I can't improv like Wycliffe, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. Wycliffe's a beast. I'm not even going to do it, you know? And he would probably be like, Michael, good. I'd be like, that sounds like shit. Because <laughs> it would just be boring. Like, I would play a few notes, a few scales, maybe do a few trills, maybe hit a high on here, and I'm done. You know, so for me, whatever, it's not enough. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I feel like he's like three things that's fucking universal, bro. Motherfucking sports, motherfucking marijuana, weed, gas, loud, and music. <laughs> music is universal. Like that's some shit. Music is some shit that you can motherfucking. You can get a nigga from the U.S. You can get a nigga from Thailand. You can get a nigga from goddamn Greenland. Fucking Asia, Korea, <laughs> motherfucking Turkey, motherfucking Iraq, <laughs> Pakistan, whatever. All them boys. And you put some music in front of them boys, like, them boys them boy don't even know how to talk to each other. They don't know no other language. But if you put this shit in front of them boy, bro, like, that shit would be like, damn, like, bro, like. There's only two things that's universal, I feel like. We. No. Okay, I thought you would <laughs> No, because I'm, I'm, I know it's some different shit out in Europe and shit than what we got in America. Two things that are universal is music and math. Mm. Two things that are universal. Math is universal. Math is, math is math no matter where the fuck you go. It's math. That too. And ain't nothing you can do to switch it. Like, nigga, same shit. Unless you, like, switch Well, they it got some new math. No, nah, I heard they got some metric new math. Metric to our yeah, imperial yeah, system. So, so you right. Math. It's the same answer, but damn, they got some new math, though. No. They do have some no math. math, though. <laughs> yeah. And they no. gonna apply that new math over here, too? Like, they, and no, it's <laughs> already, it was already over here. The new math already over here. Math well, don't math. give me no what, new what, math. What, what, I don't know the old math. What the goddamn students in school right now, like elementary students, bro. Everything past geometry. Oh my god! Everything past geometry, I don't fuck like uh, trigonometry. No, calculus. what's the one? Calculus. I hate calculus. Calculus. I actually, have those stay the same. It's the basic math that changed. Oh really? Yeah, that uh, stuff stays the same. The basic math changed. The basic math of how to get the answer. How yeah. To get the answer changed. Yeah. Why? Why? Your partner just been saying that. 
Who? Um, the one who used to be the um uh the doctor the, Ron. Yeah, yeah Ron did attorney. tell me that. Yeah, doctor, like, sorry, like Doctor Ravenel. Yeah, he did tell me that. <laughs> yeah, the math done changed now, bro. With elementary, three plus two is five. Like. That's that. Like you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna tell me I have to do something else. No, that's it, teacher. And I'm gonna <laughs> slide my paper back. <laughs> no, Michael, it's this. No, it's just not. That's it. <laughs> Five. One times right. two is two. That's it. No, you have no. I don't. Like I'm with you, Ham. Like no, I'm not gonna oh, do I that. I actually like math a lot because I like counting money. <laughs> so I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah, but no. So that's that's basically it. I mean, I'm I'm glad to I'm 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 lucky to be doing what I like to do, and what I went to school to do and wanted. I'm very lucky, and I sometimes I forget that even. So sometimes I get frustrated in what in what I'm doing in my situation. I always have to remember there are people who have degrees in I don't know whatever, and they're working at Walmart. You know, they're yeah, not doing what deaf. they want to do. So I have to be humble about that. But it's nothing <laughs> wrong with me wanting more. That's why I have to just you know make the difference. I I can want more, but don't be ungrateful for what I've had <laughs> and what I've done. Yeah, mm-hmm. right, man. Some powerful shit, bro. I try to be. <laughs> you know, me and you hang out, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm smarter than you think. Yeah, man. You, you I'm, are. I'm, I'm smarter than I show you. Uh, hold on. Uh-oh. I don't, I don't know because I think I won that last domino game when we had played. Oh <laughs> lord! <laughs> so don't, don't, and that was math. Dominoes is math. Just to let y'all know, I'm, I'm just saying. It's hustling. It, Y'all can't see, but I rolled my eyes so I don't fell asleep. <laughs> no, they can see the camera rolling right now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost doors off. Yeah, he won the domino game. Because of math, nigga. You just figured out all of the y'all <laughs> niggas play dominoes like how y'all play cards, nigga. Yeah. Y'all y'all don't figure out how to do everything. Like, oh, you, nigga. Exactly, bro. You gotta strategize, bro. D- Dante about? is a good strategist. At first, though, when I when I when I at first bring him around to play with us in the shade, I ain't gonna lie. I used he, to he beat. Smoking us, I though. used to cut their like, ass. I nigga, when he had came back, because uh, I haven't played in a while. It don't matter. You you need to download the app on your phone. Download. Oh, <laughs> you hear this fool? You hear this fool? No, he's been practicing though. He really has. Uh, I've been practicing. I just been playing. Word. No, Don Dante is a good. I, Dante and I, it's funny. You know, we're both. Our birthdays are close. But Dante to be ten years younger than me, he you can tell he hang with old people because he's just old inside. Like the way I he talks and stuff. Old people, bro. You right. can tell. I do hang with young old people too. Nigga. How old are you? Don't act like that. I'm just kidding. I'm 41. I'll be 42 in November. Dante catching up to you though. How are you gonna catch up? Nigga, we, we, only, we only ten years apart from each other. Old. Like that, right? Just Who? age fast forwards. And you, how old are you? I just turned 24. I'm young. Yeah. Bitch ass baby. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, anybody that's watching this podcast, my don't worry about the cursing. It's just me and Ham over here cursing. Yeah, because you know what what yeah, we bars none, you feel mm-hmm. saying? Mike Mike is Mike is he in his own bar nine zone. He he over there in Thailand with yeah, it, Man, matter of yeah. fact, we didn't even get to the food, man. How the food is over there, though. Okay, I'm going to tell y'all this. Yeah. At first, right, I got over there like, ooh, Thai food is like authentic. And it is very authentic, right? But I'm sorry, Thailand. I prefer American Thai food mm. for a few reasons. One, it's kind of like Amer- I've, I've had Chinese food in China when I went. I like American Chinese food better. I think because I'm American and it just suited my taste. Thai food is spicy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like butt burning spice, right? It's that real shit. Second, right. And secondly, <laughs> the the portions in Thailand are tiny. Oh wow! Small. I I'm, I'm gonna take a picture of food and send it to you. So usually, whenever I eat something in Thailand, I always order two or three because it's like one portion of rice. Literally, is like imagine like a little bowl and they dump it. It's like a little. It's so small. You need a ready rice from like the minute rice from. No, just like just any. No, I'm talking about cooked food, boy. <laughs> just like any. <laughs> oh yeah, the little, it, that's literally what a serving is. Now it it might only cost fifty cent or a dollar. Well, that's why it's so damn small. But even it's but even me. so no, but even I think I think Thai food when I first went, I was amazed. I was like, oh, this is amazing. But then I remembered in the U.S. they have some curries and stuff they don't have in Thailand. Like, they have a mango curry. I love mango. You gonna put it in a curry? What? <laughs> That's because that's they, American American they don't shit. eat American. They don't right. eat mango curry there. Now right. mango, Thai fruits in Thailand. Fire. You won't get a better fruit. Right. Off the tree, mm-hmm. sh- sweet, no pesticides, give you life. Mm. Their mango melts in your mouth. Right. It's so sweet and soft. It's so good. That's awesome. It's delicious. No, but the food, the the food is good. You know, Asia has a big street food culture. Mm-hmm. 
So literally down the street, you'll see stalls and people stir frying food in the mm-hmm. front of you. And it's it's it really brings life to the city when you're walking down the street and you just see people outside eating. The people got, you know, I ain't gonna point. People got beer and they drinking and they kind of talking yeah, and people hanging eating. out late. Like that's that's the culture. So it kind of brings the city alive. They didn't really do that in the US. Yeah, you know, drinking that in the no, 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 no. So you didn't really get the experience like they drinks and stuff like no that. but they you know they got they don't have red stripe they got other I beers know they, don't got this. they have other beers um over there but the the food culture i will say is amazing because if you guys ever came and you walk down the street you and like a certain street where it's live you just see food stalls right and people just stir frying and sitting outside and it's, yeah, it's awesome so what what food what's your favorite category out there like seafood is it seafood in thailand is expensive so is no my favorite <laughs> Food, yeah, seafood in Thailand is expensive. It's, it's actually costs the same as it is in America, and that's a developing country. Even even for their prawns, it's expensive. Yeah. I know their prawns are huge as shit. They're huge. Okay, let me tell you how they get you. Sorry, Tiger, I'm spilling all the tea. <laughs> let me tell you how they get you. I got some shrimp ones. It looks big because they give it to you with the head on. Uh huh. You take that head off. Just a little shrimp. Hey, Regular shrimp. Regular shrimp. Come out Bank Park, innit? So you 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 know you start to learn, but you know there's I there's a, a young uh, Thai cook. I follow him on TikTok. I might send it to Dante. The little dude can cook. Yeah. Like if you watch Thai people cook, you really like. Oh wow. Yeah. Thai food uses twenty ingredients, mm-hmm. but it takes ten minutes to cook. Oh, yeah. Spices and shit. But it takes ten minutes. So I don't cook it. And it smell, you know, the smell. Yeah. Kind of like Indian. You know, Indian, yeah. a lot of that stuff is curry. really smelling. Curries and, you know, all these mm-hmm. spices. Throw that bitch in there. Walk. And they <laughs> walk. And literally in 10 minutes you have a meal. But you, like, you spent $200 on spices to cook this $3 rice. So I'm like, I'm good on Thai food. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and Thai style cooking, a lot of their kitchens are outdoor. Okay. Because the, the food smells so strong. So even if someone has a nice house, they'll have a glass door off the dining room, and it'll be an outdoor kitchen. Oh, okay. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Because mm-hmm. Mark Weens, he's a, a food Yes, Mark yeah. Weens. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he lives in Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he his uh, his mother-in-law lives in the house with uh-huh. them also. And they have like a whole, because during COVID, they did the uh, outdoor cooking special uh-huh. and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, damn, like this setup is just so dope. Yeah. I'm like. But that's everybody that's set up like that. And yeah, most people, they outside. And you, so so you know Mark Queens, that's great. Any Mark Queens video you see in Bangkok, that's the food culture. And it looks amazing. Right. And it is. Yeah. But just as I'm getting, you know, like I'm actually going to go to Thai restaurant, as stupid as that sounds, because I actually miss some t- American Thai food style food and I miss the portion size. Right. It's like four times right. the amount. You know, Mark Weens is tiny. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. But that he can eat. It doesn't make no sense where he puts the shit. Though. Y'all if people go Google in here's Google Mark Weens on YouTube and watch some Bangkok, you'd be like, that's the food. Like it's it's good food. What's the weirdest yeah. shit you had? Nothing. I don't eat weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't blame you because, honestly, because the bacteria is different from what The we sanitation yeah. is not. Sanitation is yeah. different. I'm yes, sorry. It 100%. is. 100%. I mean, you'll fuck around and get a tapeworm, and you shit in tapeworms. Like, dead eyes. It's serious. Yeah. Food. So, I will tell you this. I had food poisoning twice in my five years. And someone told me, Michael, food poisoning in Thailand is food poisoning in, in, in developing. And I'll say, food poisoning in Thailand hit different than mm-hmm. what I had it here once. I was out for 24 hours. Mm. Like I felt like I just wanted to die. I was throwing up number two, fever, out. So I don't eat strange foods. Yeah. I do not. Stick to but you know. restaurants there, they have good restaurants, really fine dining, but they don't do they don't do sanitation grades like he say. It's not really a thing. They don't have inspection grades on windows and restaurants there. And it can be a beautiful restaurant. Ain't no grade on there, so you don't know what that kitchen look like. Exactly. They do. They eat crab, but they don't. They eat crab there, but it's different. It's named, it's named blue crab. No, it is a different crab. Yeah, it's, so it's the water. But I don't. You know what? Charleston people going going people going stone me. I don't eat crab. I eat crab legs. Dante knows this. People don't they don't really no, they do like crab. Like the way Charles people do, like they'll do a crab and open up the crab and do that. But I don't I don't do crab cracks because I I don't sit on no table and crack no crack. And Charleston people will bite the claw and chew the claw. I don't do all that. (laughs) Give me a give me a king crab leg. Let me crack that crab leg, (laughs) dip it in butter. You call me bougie all day. That's why I like that shit too. That shit I Oh yeah, no. (laughs) Take me to Myrtle Beach to original Benjamins. (laughs) (laughs) Or take me to Tasty Tasty Crab up um, near Northwoods Mall. That's the one, the original. I like the original Benjamins and Myrtle Beach. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. All you can eat. Sorry, yeah, I, I I I barely walk out there when I leave. I, don't give me anything that's other someone. than the, other than the shrimp and the crab. Yeah, that's why I tell people, people like, Michael, I'll be like, I don't want no salad. Okay. I don't want no. I pay for this. That's it. Exactly. Yeah, that's the, what the I'm gonna get my money's worth. <laughs> I don't want nothing else. No, no surf, surf and turf, turf? please. Um, hey, at least surf and turf. Um, beans. No. Paula Dean. We've been to Paula Dean before. I went to Paula Dean. No, she didn't. Well, she did. Yeah, she did. But I mean, in the restaurant, nobody did that. But Paula Dean, Paula's, the the restaurant was good. I just felt, when I walked in, I really felt like I was walking onto a plantation. Mm. I said I wouldn't go back after that. I'm sorry, Paula Dean. But the fried chicken was slamming. (laughs) (laughs) It was good. But I literally, literally when I walked in, I felt like, Someone was going to ask me to do some work. How so you want like, your chicken? Man? Yeah, it was like, oh my god, deep fried, country <laughs> fried, southern <laughs> fried. Uh, no, but that's that's a good point you make, man. So I tell people, for me, um, I like I like Thai food. There is great, but I just miss the portions of American Thai food that's and wild. some of the flavors that we cater to our taste buds. Right. So you you stick to restaurants, not street food. I mostly do restaurants. So I cook my own Most stuff, okay. but cooking is a pain in the ass in Thailand, y'all, because. A stove, like an oven, is not uh, it's not common. Rich people might have ovens, mm-hmm. so that that's the thing too mm-hmm. about developing they countries. They got like flat tops. Developing country, if you got a if you got an oven, you rich. Mm. If you got a dishwasher, you rich. Mm. Balling, balling. I don't have a dishwasher. Oh wow! I live in a condo. It's yeah. small. You know, Asian stuff is small. Yeah, My yeah, condo's yeah. small. It's literally like three hundred and eighty square feet. It's oh, tiny, wow. but I have a beautiful view of the city. I have a rooftop pool. Like Bangkok condos are beautiful, yeah. but you know they're small. Very. Um, now the big ones gonna cost you. Yeah. But even for somebody like we say, who got four thousand dollars in my USD, they'll come there and they'll drop. They can pay a thousand in rent. They'll pay so beast. Banging. Yeah. But me, you know, I remember I work. I make Thai bot. I make their currency. Mm-hmm. So coming to the USA for me is expensive. Yeah. That's why I tell people, like, Michael, you going to do this? Michael, come. Uh, I have friends in New York and Philly and Detroit. Michael, you going to fly to Detroit? No, no. I cannot <laughs> afford to do that. Right. Like, at the, US, right? the U.S. is, like, yeah. quadruple everything. Thing, right. Like, you sp- I spend a lot of money when I come. How much yeah. is a plane ticket, like, from the name Well, I can tell you when USD is, like, an uh, economy ticket from Bangkok to the U.S. can run anywhere from 900 to 1,000. I'm talking about, like, no. For, I know you ain't doing an economy ticket. You ain't doing that. You doing first class. You no, I'm not doing no first class. You doing economy for real? No, I do. I do premium economy, but <laughs> <laughs> a premium <laughs> t- <laughs> a premium economy ticket will run you about nineteen hundred. Okay. Business yeah. class runs you about four thousand. But see that no round trip. It matters when you're thinking I'm twenty four in- hours on a plane. It matters. It definitely matters. So to spend that extra two hundred, three hundred dollars to mm-hmm. boost, boot it up, I'm doing the same. I wouldn't blame you. No, but you Rosa, know, Rosa, where you but at? You know, but I, I, you know, <laughs> the reason why I wow. changed the first time I flew to home, I did economy. Mm-hmm. I flew Korean Air to to Seoul, and then I flew Delta. To okay. I think Atlanta and then to Charleston. Absolutely. That was my first back in 2018. Mm-hmm. Hated. I flew economy on Delta. So Delta's a good airline, yeah. but that it was a from Korea to it was like 14 hours that that stretch. Yeah. So it was five and a half to Korea, 14 from Korea to Atlanta. <sighs> You do not, I'm telling y'all now, y'all talking trash. Now, a lot of rich people, they fly economy because they, I don't care, black people, whatever. You can say what you want about us. We want the finer things, whatever. I've, I've flown economy even before I got fat during COVID. I flew economy for, for that long trip, and I was miserable. I couldn't sleep. I had cramps in my legs. I was The guy next to me was big, all in my armrest. <laughs> I said never again. Yeah. I might have a cheaper way for you. I'll let you know. It's, well, it's cheaper. That's that's what what it's a way that instead of buying a ticket the normal way, you go on the same thing and you go another option and you're paying for the trip, the whole trip, but you're paying in another form of what they're traveling in. So instead of you paying for the seat, you're paying for the mileage. Well, I'm going to tell you about that. It's cheaper. It's it. But I know people who've done those things and lost money. So uh, it can be a little funny you because yeah. you don't know who's scamming you or not. You have to be yeah. careful they, in those they, things. They did, yeah. they did it to the airport and they went to, like, they did a Dubai trip. It's $600 to go there for, for like, the whole round trip. But like, going for a regular trip, it costs them 1300 Mm. I got a torn ACL. I don't care what I got to pay. I'm not doing Hello. 24 hours in no damn squeezed up. No. Can't do it. Pre- premium economy, the seats are, are uh, wider. wider. Yeah. And the, 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 sorry, I got it. The, 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 the recline, 
is much further. Mm. The economy may be here. Premium is like here. Now, business, you can lay flat. Yeah. But it's it's much further. It's like a bigger TV. It's just a better experience. And the premium economy cabin is small. Business is usually pretty big. Economy is huge. Premium is the smallest and is usually never full. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. And I, I'm with him. You're like, damn, dude, but 1000 versus 1900 Whatever. I fly 24, 25, 29 hours. I cannot do it. Facts. And that's just that's what it really comes down to. I mean, you think, sit, imagine a car ride from here to California. You know what I mean? Oh, you're, hell you're, no. Exactly. But imagine you can stop in a car to do whatever, shake your legs, do whatever you need to do. Can't do that shit on the plane. Yeah. Not all the time. Well, you can you can get up and walk around. And people do walk around, stretch your legs. You can. Yeah, but, but that, it's yeah. not going to be like, I mean, 24 hours, about 14 hours. That's, that's, I'm being that shit thinking I am fucking Jew. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, that's something you're confined. God, and damn, I, just, I can't. I can't do it. Man, let me up this plane so I can smoke a cigarette. The food. The food is. <laughs> it's not bad. The food on airplanes is not bad. It's not bad. Some airlines have. Oh, I flew a Japanese airline, ANA, and the service is amazing with ANA. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Asian airlines shot all these American airlines down. And they don't get dragged out the. the back. Well, it's just better service. It's like everything is better service. The flight attendants are, the stewardess are friendly. Oh, pay attention to every single goddamn detail there is. To it's pay perfect. To it's perfect. He know it's perfect. He's telling you. He's telling you facts. He's not lying to you. I will pay that premium economy money because I did economy that long before, and I was very uncomfortable and very miserable. And I said I would never do that again. And I facts. mean it. Nice. Business. I can't afford it, so premium is what I can do. Now, I was upgraded to business coming here by accident. They upgraded me. I flew business from Japan to Newark, and I couldn't believe it. I was laying flat. I got my food on dishes. I had tenderloin, like steak tenderloin with potatoes and roasted vegetables, and they was bringing – I don't drink, but they was rolling champagne around the clock. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe Ooh, I'm missing. I wish I'd been doing that. I'd I thought about you. I'm like, Dante ah, would have been drunk. The- <laughs> It was amazing. It was amazing. But I, I, I didn't have to pay. Right. But I know I'll never do it again. I was that was my chance. That's your blessing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you got you got to experience that. But that's that's my thing. Like if I'm doing like especially going to like South Africa or anything like that, I need to be laying down for half the trip at least. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You got to. Y'all don't understand being cooped up, especially you got the middle seat. Oh, oh God. I always do aisle. I cannot. Uh, aisle or win- no, I can't do window anymore either. Mm-mm. That's just a bitch, man. Mm. But, he knows. Yeah. How many times have you been to South Africa? Uh, I've only been once. Um, I was much younger with my grandparents and shit like that. But I've been, like, I do, uh, I do a lot of South America. Mm. I mean, so I do, like, uh, Colombia. I've done uh, Panama City, Panama. Um, was supposed to do Brazil a month ago. Um, they changed the COVID protocol, so got to push that shit a little bit back. But it looks like the world's getting a little bit better. It's so. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. I've been to Venezuela, Colombia, and Argentina. All right, so that's 14. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, uh, that's 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. You reminded 15. me. I did it, t- and it was for music. Oh, wow. I did a tour of South America. South America, man, I loved it Top down 10. there. Love I it. loved it down like, there. It's, so it's a poor country, too, but the people, and the food was good. South America is great. So, I loved it. the most exciting place and the worst place that was boring or not exciting? Like, those two places. You mean the in, in all the places? Most exciting and non most exciting. Well, I ain't gonna say that on the podcast. I don't want to hurt nobody feelings. Fuck them, bro. Now you say that on the podcast. No, I think. <laughs> well, no, you said that's on your podcast. <laughs> don't say that's on all podcasts. He's been, he's been, he's been. South America actually, Colombia has a. They got their own. They got their own vibe. Thanks. Argentina is more European. They're like they're they blonde hair, blue eyes, Spanish. It's it's a different vibe there. Venezuela was cool. I was a little bit afraid because Venezuela Caracas is pretty dangerous. I didn't do too much there. I think the most exciting city I've been in, the most exciting place I've been in the most exciting. This is hard. It's probably well not for me but people would probably hands down say the most exciting place is probably where I live now, Bangkok. Bangkok is like number one in the world for tourism. It just is. It's crazy. Y'all would come there and lose y'all minds but I would tell y'all I would tell all four of you, number one, the embassy will not get y'all out of jail. Y'all will stay there. Number two, y'all better follow these laws because there's nothing I can do to get you out. Because I'm telling everybody just in case. Just get me some canteen, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Because he know. 
when you go, that's another thing. When you go in foreign countries, people are like, I'm American. I'm like, okay, you carry yeah. behind over there. Your American don't apply to those people's laws. They, they got rest, their own laws. They, rest they got their own police. Yeah. They got their own everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they do not play. They, they, they do DJ not. S- they S- will lock. 56 nights. They will lock your What's butt out. What's other rules? That you might say, don't the police? Uh, well, I'm saying, you know, they, they, oh, they oh. have their own, you know, they, there are people who've gone in certain countries, dis- you ain't seen them. Like, yeah. America, we can't Free just Britney barge Garner. into people's countries like everybody think and just snatch people out. You got to go through, they have their own stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. They got that girl locked so, up like, in Russia and they don't know where They talk about her, they don't know where she is, yeah, so exactly. I don't know. So, like, man, do them boy have, like, a, like... I'm just going off of movies and shit. Bro. Oh lord! Do, do they do they have like you know from Rush Hour Two? Like was that Rush Hour Two? <laughs> you talking about what, triads? What? No, no, not the tri- not, not not the triads, bro. I'm talking about like like a heaven on earth, a, a, a um, massage parlor. <laughs> okay, so Thailand is the land. I want you. I of want course. you. I want you. Damn. I want you. So I've heard Thailand is the land of massage. Um, you can Google it. Everybody's like, "Well, I want to." Thailand is like ranks number one in massage. There's a massage parlor on every corner. Not all of it is the what you guys are thinking. There are some legit massage shops, and it's yeah. cheap. You can get a two hour massage for like fifteen dollars. Ooh, that's it. So that's where it's Tunde and uh, my my brother and his wife went for their honeymoon to Thailand. Um, and they went because they're big on massages, like. And he was like, yo, we got like three massages a day. Like, because it's just cheap. You it's cheap. I tell him, boy, get this hundred and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to deal get, with some to, stacks. But I mean, you know, no, I, I, I will say, I will say that. He's Thai massage is ranks number one. Honestly, everybody there are, there are people around the world who studied massage in Bangkok. They've flown to Bangkok to study. Massage. Isn't that like back. one of the most expensive styles of shit? Cause I swear they got shit like that down here. Like they call it Thai massage. Mm-hmm. And, and they 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 they're, they're, they're expensive they're, as because it's a lot they do. Yeah yeah yeah. They're 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 doing the same thing with that. But no, it's it's massage in Thailand is is cheap. Um, and of course you have your other massage. You know you got your naughty massage where it's oh, a massage, but ending. then you oh, go upstairs. That. No, no, no. It can be more than happy, and you can get full service. Like you can get mm-hmm. that also, in, in there as well. But there also is legit spas and stuff like that. Really? But the massage on every it's the shops on every corner. Oh, if I ever go out there, I want to see the legit shit. But I want to see no, no, no. But you there are you know that this what I'm saying of why people like Thailand. It's wide open. Like there are so a street in Thailand is called a soy. Like soy, like soy milk. Yeah. You go down to soy, there will be places you see girls just sitting out on chairs, and you'll see somebody, they'll be like, you know, come, come. They'll be trying to get you to come, and the girls will just be sitting there. It'll be a whole street of places like that. And you, Straight brothels. And, and, and you go in, and the girls will come in, and you pick one, and you go outstairs. There's your heaven on earth. It's that, it's that simple. Sucky, sucky. Me love you long time. Me lucky, lucky, sucky, sucky. I mean, like you long time. It can happen, but it's not just. It's, it's not just. I mean, it's. it's I, ain't try, I ain't trying to do that, man. Be locked up in Thailand, jail, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you know what's funny? You're not gonna get locked. You're not gonna get locked up. It's on the street. They're not outside. They're sitting outside, telling you to come in. Oh, we're a bit. And a lot of them pay. A lot of them pay the police, so you know they can oh, do that type of. Yeah, the police probably. You know, yeah. uh, probably the exactly. police. Officer. That's, That's what I'm police telling probably you. Probably the pimp. Exactly. That's what I'm telling you. So you know, it's like that. It's just like that. So yeah, that's it. That's yeah, you it. Definitely gotta be careful out there, though. Yes, you because do. Because the, the streets will be working with the police. Yeah. So if you if they say like you approach a young woman, um, she's gonna hit you with your price. If you fake on her with the whoop, she's gonna call either the taxi man or the police, and they're gonna come get you. So I think something that I want everybody to, I want to tell people too is you know everybody America puts. You know, two two people that they you know put down on. Even as black people, we we are looked down upon. But Asians are under us, as far as like masculinity. They think Asian men are small and feminine. You know, I will tell you now. You, you I've living in Thailand. Yes, you. I mean, you got big Thai people too. You got with big bellies. You got all kinds. You have small. You have a mix of people. But Thailand, they get down like they fight there too actually the the funny thing i've seen the way they do it is if you and one guy get into a fight so they have my favorite thing in Thailand actually is motorbike taxi Mm -hmm. so instead of taking a taxi they have street corners Mm -hmm. where guys have on these orange and yellow vests 
They are taxi guys, the motorbike taxis. Most of them are actually, they're gangs, pretty much. But they have a sheet and tie with where they go. You know, you can translate it. Um, but I can speak a little bit, so I'll tell them where I want to go, and they give you a price. So motor motorbike taxi is my favorite. You literally, I know you guys are like, what? Yes, you have to get on back of a bike where a guy is. But in Asia, in Asia, that's not a thing. It's not, it's not so hyper-masculine as it is here. Like, yes, I'm on a bike, a dude. But it's right up against me, and he has no quarrels, and he takes me where I'm going, and I get off, and I give him my. It's not a thing because it's yeah. common; it's part of the culture. But yeah, I get the way I need but the the the, the way it works. If I get into an argument with one of the motor taxi guys, that whole corner is gonna gang me yeah. all twenty, and they're not gonna be easy on me because I'm one. All twenty of them will stomp me into the floor. Yeah. That's how they are in Thailand. They use poles. Yeah, they use they, machetes. Anything they can find. They will pull a machete like. The, the actual taxi drivers, they all have machetes and crowbars in their trunks. They are ready. Mm-hmm. If you don't pay them their money, they're going to get out. They're going to grab that machete, and you better run for the hills because they will chase you, and they will try to kill you. That's how it is. Better. So that's what people are like. They small. They can't fight. Oh, Why? that's what you I think. No. And then, of course, you know Muay Thai is a very high-respected martial art. Yeah. That shit. Yeah. Muay Thai is serious. Yes. Nothing but knees and elbows. And mm-hmm. you know, so it's it's things I want. To, I just want to get rid of some of the stereotypes that people are thinking of. Some of the stuff just isn't true. Yeah. And tack, the Thai guys are tatted. Some of them are tatted from neck to ankle. Mm-hmm. Like they 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 got their own little they hood is, thing. Yeah. They do. The so, smallest nigga out there will beat everywhere. your ass. <laughs> it's just different. It's, it's, like it's, 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 it's different. It's different, you know. You know they're 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 they are Buddhists mostly. You know they have Christians and Muslim. Muslims are south of Thailand, closer to Malaysia, but um, that's a different thing. But most of them are Buddhists, so they have a lot of like uh, Buddhist tattoos. What's what's the needle tattoo that they do? Oh, with they? Um, yeah, that's yeah. um. So that's the traditional way of tribal. Um, when you go in for that, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but see, it's, it it depends. Go like. Uh, Polynesian tattoos are different than mm. Thailand tattoos, mm-hmm. but it's still all under the same thing. You tell the person your story, they pick on your body where they do the traditional tattoo mm. and what it's going to be. Mm. Um, there's a guy in Hawaii who he's been doing this over like 30, 40 years. Um, and I mean, he's he's booked out years out, you know what I mean? But it's a whole ceremony. You sit down with them, everybody out of the tribe, they come massage you. Mm-hmm. Um, while you're getting it done, you get being massaged also. Um, it's it's really crazy to see, but it's really dope. Like mm. I, I only do tribal tattoos also, so mm. it's just like I I I do a lot of studying into the shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not fucking with them them little tattered ass Thailand. No, uh, I'm telling y'all like it's you yeah. know people. I try to tell people you you gotta don't don't watch the you know it's, it it just it makes like you know just like I said they see things on TV and think certain things about us. It's the same. Same thing, yeah. right? It's the same yeah. thing, you know? And, you know, it's just, it's good to be on the other side of the, of the glass. And look, you know, it's good for that. So, yeah. They probably got a bar that show over here, too. They really do. <laughs> bar night, you trying to They do Oh, man. <laughs> hey, oh, my God. You are so awful. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> he just playing. I, but anyway. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, that's man. that's mostly everything, though. Yeah, man, it was a good episode, man. Yeah, Being with yeah, you, bro, man. Appreciate you coming here, man. You know you don't like the dab, you like the hug. My fucking <laughs> I love, I love Dante, y'all. I said people would look at us and think something going on, ain't nothing going on. We just tight like that. I can't explain that, you know. Motherfuckers, listen, we don't care about that shit over here. <laughs> Stefan retwists my dress. Who's that's, Stephon? A, that's a whole dude. You gonna say something to me? No. Who's Stefan? Fuck you. <laughs> my, you don't give a fuck about none of that my shit, nigga. Oh, your brother? Yeah, don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Hey, man. Shit. And his yeah. shit be. But you look, you look like you need a Nah, see, I'm wolfing. Yeah, he been in a minute. Word. Wolfing Ooh, big yeah, time. Yeah, and then, yeah, ooh, Eric. Yeah, Eric yeah. zooming in. All right, word. He's zooming in on the new <laughs> growth. I might have said zooming on the new growth. No, but it's, it's it's been a pleasure. I really um this was exciting. I'm sorry we end up going longer, but I mean I had a good time. Like yeah, I just reporting, man. This is good. Thank you guys for having me. I feel up, like man. a I feel important. You are <laughs> important, bro. Where, yeah, when you man. see yourself on Instagram, be like, hey, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where, are you doing, Where can the people find you. you at though? So I do have an Instagram uh page. It's um my Instagram is mostly for my music and stuff. Um, it's tenorclef1980 is my username. And you can also find me on Facebook, uh, Michael Robinson Jr. 
and I don't have a website yet. I was told I need to do better, but maybe I'll get one. So basically, it's my Facebook and my IG. You can DM me any questions you want to reach out, send a friend request. Awesome. That's it. Yeah, man. Much Word, respect man. to you. Thank Real you. Tough, man, give it up, y'all. Word. Dog, man. You already know, man. Fuck with me. This is Wamp Bundy. Wamp underscore for Lauren on Instagram. You already know we hitting on you. Feel what I'm saying? Look at goddamn. Uh, that girl from um, you look like the, you look like throw something at you. You look like the girl from um, what a movie, what a TV show called um, Jimmy Neutron. But listen, um, yeah, <laughs> not Jimmy Neutron. I remember. <laughs> with the dream. Sorry, Ham. I'm sorry. Hey, I, I just had to throw that in. There. But yeah, man, follow me uh, Wamp underscore for Lauren on Instagram. Went uh, Snapchat. Uh, um, Went for Lauren. If you guys saying follow the Bar Nine Show. What bar nine eight four three on Instagram, man. Open your eyes, son. But um, <laughs> I, trying, I, hold, I holding this pee in right now, bro. That's what I all, like. This. All social media is push your head at me. CeeLo yeah. Ham, like CeeLo Green, but instead of green, it's Ham with two M's. Where you already know, man. If y'all both want to goddamn get a podcast going on, man, holla at Do Work Media, man, all day, man. I'm gonna get you right, man. Yeah, and sir. my dog, Mister Five, he ain't gonna we ham ain't gonna say nothing this time. Mister Five, he Mr. get you right on the on the lenses all day, man. But man, appreciate you, bro. You know, Thank you for having me, man. Big up, big up, big up. The video blue ain't even true, man. Appreciate you for coming out, man. But hey, hold him down till next time. Bye, night show, 2022. Hold it.